homicides, car bombings, and the occasional house fire, really something that you should expect as part of your life experience and should get used to, not something that you have any right to object to. This is middle class life. Now consider that middle class experience and then consider that the overwhelming majority of Americans consider themselves to be middle class. I'm not saying that the overwhelming majority of Americans live in the conditions I just described, although a hell of a lot more do than we generally acknowledge. I'm saying that the label middle class describes nothing, tells us nothing, at least nothing honest, about the conditions in which people live. It tells us everything about how we want to be viewed, given the amount of poverty shame that is built into our culture. We describe ourselves as middle class in order to avoid the judgment built into acknowledging that we are in poverty. When we have the idea that people with the right qualities, with the right work ethic, can rise from any conditions with no upper limit to their success, there is judgment in poverty. I think it's fair to say that at least most of us have an inkling that the American dream um, is uh, not something, not a basket to put all of your eggs in. I think most of us know that. We still kowtow to it in the ways in which we lie about our own conditions, of course. We still put a lot of eggs in the basket when we vote and uh, politically align ourselves in such a way as to demonstrate our affirmation of the American dream. When factory workers reliably vote to remove regulation applicable to factory owners, when factory workers take on tax burden in order to offset tax break for factory owners, then yes, we are still paying homage to the American dream. Because they are doing so, we are doing so, with the expectation that we will be factory owners any day now. We just have to put in those extra hours little bit of unpaid overtime. Go along to get along. Take the rap for that bad decision or shift the blame. And then we'll get that promotion. And that'll lead to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Because, of course, CEOs are promoted, not appointed. Oops. Most of us know that it's not true. To some degree, we know that it's not true. Very few of us can take an honest look at the degree to which it is not true without tempting a panic attack, or at the very least, some significant despair. Because most of the ways that it's supposed to work, it doesn't. We, and by we, let's be specific, I mean Americans with no felony background, some higher education, between the ages of 25 and 50, are earning less than our parents, paying more in student loans, have accumulated more consumer debt, and accumulate consumer debt at a higher rate, leverage a higher percentage of our consumer debt in order to cover necessities like utilities, rent, groceries. When we are unemployed, we are unemployed for longer. At any point in time, we have less potential employment opportunities available to us than our parents did, or, for that matter, than our parents do. At the same time, our parents are significantly economically behind where their parents were. Our parents will retire anywhere from years to decades later in life than their parents did. The American dream wasn't true for them. And it's really not true for us. The cycle of successive success that is supposed to occur is reversed. Each generation has a little less opportunity than the last one did. 
But even there, we have some very, very legitimate questions about how true it was in our grandparents' time. We have to acknowledge that it was a militantly enforced, rather than a soft reinforced, which we have now, apartheid state. So it's kind of difficult to talk about how great the good old days used to be. Was there ever a time when it was true? When it was reliably true? 